Um, here's my circuit. This is the uh, IRFPG50 MOSFET right here. Um, two times 24 volt 7 amp hour batteries and the positive of the battery comes in into the resistor into the drain of the MOSFET source of the MOSFET goes right back through a shunt into the negative of the battery source and the diode goes from the bottom part of the coil to the top part of the coil and from the gate uh, signal pin number one through a 10k pot uh, into the 555 timer and the 555 timer ground is going back to the um, ground and this timer is running on a 9 volt battery um, through a 1.5k ohm uh, resistor just limit the current about 20 milliamps or so and um, and so basically this adjusts the gate resistance this is frequency adjustment and this is uh, duty cycle adjustment I use the bare basic 555 timer a stable circuit right in the forest MIMS radio shack guide to 555 timers and this is the bare basic circuit um, that any kid can read and build my limitation on this is I'm limited to 50 percent duty cycle or more and uh, yet I'm able to get this MOSFET into full um, oscillation okay, so what I'm going to show is This is basically what the what's going across the uh, inductive resistor. You can see that when the MOSFET switch is on, power goes through the resistor, and when it shuts off, it spikes. You can see a spike there. It comes back up, and then it rings, and then it goes back up. So it powers up, and you can see it a little bit better here. And you can definitely see that those spikes are being made. And so after the fact that power has gone through an inductive resistor at a certain volt times amps, that you still get a spike back, which means you're getting potential back after 100% has been dissipated by the resistor, right? So, and if you measure the voltage across the shunt on the negative line, um, You'll see anywhere from uh, millivolts up to you know several hundred millivolts. So there's absolutely, um, and you can uh, calculate that to figure out which current is. So there's real current, real voltage going through there, and you still get that spike back, um, which you can see right there. The cap I'm using is a on the 555 timer is a 0 0.001 microfarad cap. That way um, I can have it charge and discharge pretty quick for pretty high frequency so what I'll show you is this is the frequency adjuster here and I'll show you right here that when I turn that the off time ringing the off time ringing and the on time power stays in proportion so that really is uh, fr the frequency See, high frequency, low frequency, high, low, high, low, high, low, right there, high, low. And then the duty cycle right here, you can see that the only thing changing is the, is the on pulse, how long it stays on. And I can increase it up to whatever, 90-something, and, and I can bring it all the way down to 50-something. And that's the high, that's the, the, uh, shortest duty cycle I'm able to do with this particular circuit is 50%. Okay, and then uh, you just saw something happen there. So what it is, is it's actually kind of pretty. Um, so anyway, again, on pulse, and when the MOSFET shuts off, the field in the inductor spikes, and you get this long spike, rings, and then it powers again. And so what I witness is basically this is 
I can increase the frequency so high or I can uh, reduce the duty cycle down to 50 percent it goes into self oscillation I, or I can slow the frequency down to bring it out of it increase the frequency it goes back in or I can take or when it's like this I can take the um, the re resistor at the signal gate and I can increase resistance until it goes into that self oscillation okay and as soon as I do you can see that for example right now the battery voltage is 23.91 I can increase the resistance you can see instantly the voltage shoots up because once it goes into self oscillation basically it's I mean obviously it's going to draw less and so I got the frequency up as high as possible duty cycle as low as possible and I have the um, gate signal resistance up uh, pretty high so So what I gotta do is um, reduce the duty cycle, play around with the uh, increasing the frequency, and play around with increasing the resistance of the the signal uh, for the MOSFET, and you'll get it to um, trigger into uh, self oscillation. And you can test that the millivolts here drop substantially. So anyway, you can see that the resi uh, the resistor and the MOSFET are um, pretty cool to the touch and now this resistor is not steaming or anything but you can see that the ambient temperature of everything in here is about 71 degrees 70 71 and when I bring it to this resistor 73 and so there really is heat being made and the good thing about this is once it's in this self oscillation mode is that um, this battery just likes to climb on its own I can come back in a few minutes and it'll probably be up 2415. I just want to show one thing real quick here. Um, I took the diode off of the top part of the uh, inductor, inductor resistor, and I have it going straight to these little photo flash caps, which um, 330 microfarads, one or 330 volts, 120 microfarads, so that's 660 volts, um, 60 microfarads, and they're just happily charging up. I got the diode going to the positive and then the negative back to um, common ground uh, or the same ground as the uh, battery and the voltage is climbing above battery voltage which shows that when the diode is connected to another battery the battery doesn't charge up it's not just because it's leveling off to the level of the battery it is actually going up there because well, the spikes are obviously higher than uh, the voltage going in, which means this is all running through this inductive resistor. And when it collapses, the spike is able to push. Um, that potential is able to be uh, utilized and captured again. So if 100% is being dissipated in this resistor, uh, what am I doing with um, capacitors charged 8 volts above the batteries? So once it goes through, you still got some.